As Travis uh, said, I'm uh, going to talk about how to build a compositional UI with uh, hosted views and hypermedia. OK, it doesn't work. Um, my name is Osborne Ursberg, and I'm a digital experience architect working in PX. Um, there are three concepts introduced in the title of this talk. Uh, compositional UI, hosted views, and hypermedia. And if uh, these concepts make you scratch your head, don't worry. I'll drive, dive right into what they are. Let's start with the last one first, hypermedia. Uh, to learn what hypermedia is, I have a shameless self-plug of a presentation I did at the Nordic API's Platform Summit in 2016 called The Rest and Then Some. And uh, uh, I can recommend you watch that on uh, the Nordic API's YouTube channel. Um, I hope that explains uh, the subject well. Uh, Bill Dorfeld also did a blog post on the same talk on the Nordic API blog. So you should uh, read that as well if, if hypermedia is, is new to you. Uh, but just for a quick refresher, um, here's a few ways to describe hypermedia. Hypermedia is basically just a description of how the next request is going to look like. You can think of it as a recipe. Another way to look at hypermedia is navigating through a city. Instead of having a static map that might be outdated and won't reflect runtime changes such as road work and congestion, you follow signs and traffic lights that tell you what to do at every opportunity. By doing this at runtime while walking or driving through a city, you can even accommodate for when in the day a given request is performed, and by whom, and respond additionally. This runtime conditionality of hypermedia is one of its great strengths. One last real-life analogy to hypermedia is picking up a package at the post office. Instead of having a printed manual of how to retrieve the package, you just respond to the affordances and clues given to you during the process. You start by entering the post office. You put notice a sign saying, push the button for ticket. So you push the button. That's an affordance. And out comes a ticket representing your position in the queue. You start staring at the queue counter. And once it reaches your number, a clerk will shout it out to, loud to you. You walk to the counter, present your ticket, confirming your queue position. The clerk then asks you what you want, implicitly giving you a menu of options you can perform at the post office. One of these options is to pick up a package, which you choose by saying it out loud. Then the clerk asks you for your tracking number. You show the clerk an SMS with the tracking number. She punches it into the terminal, walks back to the warehouse, picks up the package, and hands it to you. The clerk asks you for your signature and gives you a digital pad you can scribble on. You sign, exit the post office, and off you go. This interaction with you and the post office clerk is hypermedia in real life. It's a self-documenting process, giving you clues on what you can perform at each stage. Would you prefer a printed uh, manual called Package Retrieval Instruction Manual or a self-documenting process like this to pick up a package? If self-documenting processes work so well in the real world, uh, perhaps they can in the digital world as well. Now on to the second concept, hosted views. Hosted views are, in principle, web components connected to a server-side API often a, a microservice. It's uh, implemented with uh, web components 
uh, and uh, uh, we would like to to use, uh, sorry, the technically hosted views are implemented with an iframe and some JavaScript that talk to a server-side API. Uh, but over time, as web components mature, we hope to take advantage of the web components uh, standard instead. So we can uh, use that. And lastly, let's define what a compositional UI is. Composition is the act of combining parts or elements to form a whole. So an, an important principle of composition is that each part is independent from one another. This means that part A works without part B and vice versa. It also means that part A can't interact with part B directly. To interact, each part needs to communicate through a defined protocol. This is done with window.post message in JavaScript and bubbled up as a JavaScript event callback that every component can subscribe to. That's the message protocol. So how do we piece all of these things together? Let's take a concrete example in the form of a web shop. Imagine you have a web shop that sells cats. OK, perhaps not actual cats, but cat pictures. Uh, if you own a small business like this, you probably don't want to do payment processing yourself. And with GDPR, you probably don't want to deal with user data either. Let's see how we can solve these problems by going through the process of buying three cat pictures. We go to the shopping cart and would like to check out. To check out, we need both user and payment data. Wouldn't it be nice if we could outsource that to someone else? With hosted views, we can. In order to host a view that can collect user data, let's first perform an API request. We start by creating a login resource with a post request like this. In the response, we get a list of operations that might give us alternatives for logging in. In this example, we get a JavaScript URI. Let's take that JavaScript URI and embed it in our web page. We plug it into a script tag. We point the data attribute to the div we want the view hosted in. And the login view shows up in our web shop. All delivered from an API via Hypermedia. Let's log in and see what happens. When we log in, we do that inside the hosted view. The hosted view itself collects the data from the HTML form and submits it as an API request to its backend API. The response from the identification request might look like this, a 302 found status with a location header and the user data in the body. Uh, but of course, identification should be done with Curity uh, and OAuth and OpenID Connect but that's outside the scope of this talk. Uh, the 302 found response is translated into a consumer identified event that is raised uh, with a callback in JavaScript via post message. From this event, the shop will store the URI of the identified consumer for later use. If we go back to the identification response we just looked at, it was a bit abbreviated. If we put back in what was missing, we find an operations property with a relation telling us that this is the next operation the hosted view should perform. If we have several operations, using link relations like next allows us to distinguish the operations from another and allows the, the view to know which operation to perform next. The rest of the acquired shipping address operation tell us, tells us everything we need to know to populate an HTML form that acquires a shipping address. So let's take the parts that describe the next request and create an HTML form from that. This form can then be used to render a new view inside the, new, inside the same hosted container. And as you can see, everything we need to perform this request was 
uh, available in the previous response, so our front end is, uh, is completely stateless. The front end also does no logic on how to build the URI to the API. The URI returned is a completely opaque identifier and nothing more. The client not having to build the URIs also mean the API do doesn't have to expose internal identifiers to the outside world. It just needs to expo expose opaque URIs, and the URIs themselves are the identifiers. How these URIs are structured is of no interest to the client. So we get a form asking for our shipping address. Let's fill out the form and see what happens. As we submit the form, a shipping address request is performed against the backend API based on the operation we found in the response from the identification request. The response from the shipping address request might look like this. And the 201 created response is translated into a shipping address submitted event that is raised with a callback in JavaScript via post message. This event is something the shop is interested in, since it needs to ship the picture to us. As the web shop now knows our address, it can calculate the shipping cost. The shop now has enough information to initiate the hosted payment view. We initiate that by performing a post request with a previously acquired consumer URI set as the payer, along with the payment data. The payment order is created, and again, we get an operation containing a JavaScript URI that we need to add to our HTML document. And the hosted payment menu shows up on the web shop, and we can choose in which way we want to pay. We choose to pay with a credit card. Since we identified ourselves with a registered profile, we get to pay with a previously used credit card. We click the credit card number and then the payment button. When the payment is completed, a payment completed event is raised by the hosted payment view. Based on the event received by the hosted payment view, the web shop can now show a receipt page for the submitted order. So, what are the key takeaways from this talk? Use events in the front end to communicate by establishing a message protocol. This decouples the front end and components from one another and enables them to change independently. It also makes each comp component reusable. I also recommend that you raise these events based on the hypermedia and metadata found in the response from your backend API. This moves complexity from the back end and down into from the front end, sorry, and down into the back end. I also recommend that you describe allowed operations with hypermedia in every response from your API. This allows for role-based access control, RBAC, and other state variations affecting what you can and can't do with your resources. I also recommend that you build the UI based on hypermedia received from the API. This way, the front end becomes reactive, event-driven, and complexity is moved, uh, and business logic is moved down into the API. I also recommend that you use URIs as universal resource identifiers. Don't expose internal identifiers to the client. Don't encourage the client to construct URIs based on a known shape or form. Client-side URI construction causes coupling. With an event and hypermedia-driven architecture like this, the order of each step in the process is irrelevant because each request is described in the response to the previous request. This means the server can reorder the steps without breaking the client. And if the affordances of your API is described with rich enough hypermedia controls, the API can even change the contents of each request without breaking the client. 
Hypermedia formats such as Siren, Hydra, and Hyperschema enables you to do this, but you can, of course, also build it yourself. And I know what you're thinking. This might all look fine and dandy in theory and in the presentation, but it can never work in practice. Hypermedia as the engine of application state will never work for anything but the World Wide Web. And perhaps you're right. But in PayX, we believe this is the best way to build robust web scale applications. And that's why we built PayX Checkout using the principles described in this talk. I hope that at least gives you some confidence that for certain applications, hypermedia and event-driven architecture might be the right choice. Please reach out on Twitter, email, and Slack. Please join the HTTP APIs Slack uh, workspace. We have lots of great people there working with the API space. And of course, join Curity's uh, Nordic APIs Slack as well. Thank you. <laughs>